The Hidden Suffering, Wives of Infamous Serial Killers The lives of serial killers' wives are often overshadowed by the grisly tales of their husbands. Caught in horrifying narratives, many of these women were unaware of the extent of their partner's crimes. This video explores their lives, unraveling the betrayal, denial, and complicity hidden within these complex relationships. Number 1. Clara Neal, married to Earl Nelson, the Gorilla Killer. Clara Neal's marriage to Earl Nelson, later infamous as the Gorilla Killer, is a poignant example of profound obliviousness and denial in the face of horrific crimes. Nelson, responsible for at least 22 murders between 1926 and 1927, was one of the earliest known American serial killers. He targeted landladies, whom he approached under the guise of renting a room, before strangling them to death. Nelson's modus operandi involved traveling across various states, which he explained away to Clara as necessary for his job as a salesman. Despite the erratic nature of Nelson's travels and his frequent, unexplained absences, Clara remained steadfast in her belief of his innocence. Her trust in Nelson was so unshakable that even after his arrest and during his trial, she refused to believe the overwhelming evidence against him. Clara's unwavering faith in her husband persisted up to his execution on January 13, 1928, in the San Quentin State Prison. This tragic story underscores how love and trust can blind one to the horrifying truths lying beneath the surface of their closest relationships. Number 2. Judith Mawson, Life with Gary Ridgway, The Green River Killer Judith Mawson's 16-year marriage to Gary Ridgway, known as the Green River Killer, stands as a stark reminder of the deceitful capabilities of serial killers. Ridgway was convicted of 49 murders but confessed to more than 70, making him one of America's most prolific serial killers. His killing spree began in 1982, targeting women, primarily runaways and sex workers, in the Seattle and Tacoma, Washington area. Judith met Ridgway in 1985, at which point he had already been committing murders for several years. To her, Ridgway was a gentle and attentive husband, completely at odds with his murderous alter ego. Their marriage seemed normal and happy, with Judith unaware of his secret life. It wasn't until Ridgway's arrest in 2001 that Judith discovered the horrifying truth. The revelation not only shattered her perception of her husband but also her sense of reality, as she had to come to terms with the fact that she had been living with a monster. Judith's ordeal highlights the devastating impact that living with such profound deception can have, forever altering one's sense of trust and safety. Number 3. Carolyn Boone, ensnared by Ted Bundy's charm. Carolyn Boone's relationship with Ted Bundy, whom she met in 1974, was marked by a deep belief in his innocence despite mounting evidence against him. Boone's devotion to Bundy was profound, and she maintained her stance even during his 1979 trial for multiple murders in Florida. In a shocking courtroom development, Bundy proposed to Boone, and they were married there, taking advantage of a Florida law that allowed for an in-court wedding declaration. Boone gave birth to Bundy's daughter in 1981 while he was on death row, further demonstrating her commitment and belief in him. It wasn't until Bundy's final confessions, where he admitted to the brutal murders of at least 30 women, that Boone faced the reality of his crimes. This realization led to the end of their relationship, with Boone leaving and ceasing all contact with Bundy until his execution in 1989. Number 4. Rosemary West the dark partnership with Fred West. Rosemary West's involvement with her husband Fred West was far from the narrative of an unknowing, innocent spouse. Married in 1972, Rosemary actively participated in the brutal crimes committed by the couple, including the murder of their own daughter. The West's House of Horrors at 25, Cromwell Street became the site of at least 12 known murders, involving the abduction, rape, torture, and murder of young women, with Rosemary playing a central role in these atrocities. During their 1995 trial, the extent of Rosemary's complicity was laid bare, resulting in her conviction for 10 murders and a life sentence. Her case is disturbing as it challenges the usual perception of the spouse as a passive or unwitting accomplice, showing her as an equal partner in their horrific acts. Number 5. Darcy Brudos, Unaware of Jerry Brudos's Secret Life Darcy Brudos married Jerry Brudos in 1961, unaware of the disturbing life he led behind closed doors. 
Jerry, who later became known as the Lust Killer, was a serial killer in Oregon, responsible for at least four women's murders in the late 1960s. His modus operandi involved abducting women and keeping mementos from his victims, like shoes and undergarments. In their home, Jerry enforced strict rules, particularly concerning his garage. Darcy was forbidden from entering this space, which Jerry used for his morbid activities. This control over their shared space was a key factor in keeping his criminal activities hidden. Darcy remained oblivious to her husband's double life until his arrest in 1969, a revelation that shattered her understanding of their marriage and her husband's character. Number 6. Bonnie Jean Balch, Escaping Henry Lee Lucas Bonnie Jean Balch's marriage to Henry Lee Lucas in the 1950s was marked by early signs of his violent and erratic behavior. Married when Lucas was 20 and she was just 15, their relationship was troubled from the start. Lucas exhibited abusive tendencies and a disturbing fascination with death, raising red flags about his nature. Their union ultimately fell apart due to Lucas's increasingly dangerous behavior. This decision likely spared Bonnie Jean from a more tragic fate, as Lucas later became infamous for his criminal activities. He was convicted of multiple murders and made dubious claims of killing hundreds more. Balch's early departure from this relationship highlights the importance of recognizing and acting on warning signs from a partner. Number 7. Rosalie Jean Willis, Life Before Manson's Infamy Rosalie Jean Willis's marriage to Charles Manson was brief and occurred before he became the infamous cult leader. Their union was marked by criminal activities in Manson's imprisonment, during which Rosalie gave birth to their son and eventually moved on, remarrying and distancing herself from Manson's later crimes. Rosalie's story contrasts sharply with those of other serial killer's spouses, as her life with Manson was before his notorious cult activities. Her experience underscores the unpredictable and often hidden trajectories of individuals like Manson, revealing how life can entangle people with future criminals in unexpected ways. Number 8. Paula Dietz, The Dual Life of Dennis Rader Paula Dietz married Dennis Rader, later known as the BTK Killer, in 1971. Rader led a disturbing double life, being a family man and a church council president on one hand, and a brutal serial killer on the other. His nickname, BTK, stood for Bind, Torture, Kill, which described his method of murdering his victims. Over their marriage, Rader killed 10 people in Kansas between 1974 and 1991. Despite his heinous acts, Rader maintained a facade of normalcy that completely deceived Dietz. She was unaware of his crimes, as Rader was adept at keeping his criminal activities separate from his family life. This deception was so effective that even when Rader was finally arrested in 2005, Dietz and their two children were in disbelief. The revelation not only destroyed their family but also left Dietz grappling with the realization that she had shared her life with a monster for over 30 years. Number 9. Vicki Thorne, The Terror of Being Married to the Yorkshire Ripper Vicki Thorne, formerly known as Sonia Sutcliffe, was married to Peter Sutcliffe, the infamous Yorkshire Ripper. Sutcliffe was convicted of murdering 13 women and attempting to murder seven others between 1975 and 1980 in England. Their marriage began in 1974, a year before Sutcliffe committed his first known murder. Thorne's life with Sutcliffe was overshadowed by his heinous acts, although she claimed to be unaware of his crimes throughout their marriage. Sutcliffe led a double life, presenting himself as a quiet, hard-working husband while secretly carrying out a series of brutal attacks on women. The public revelation of his crimes in 1981 was a shock to Thorne, bringing immense public scrutiny and questioning of her knowledge of his activities. This case highlights the complex dynamics in the lives of those married to serial killers, where fear, manipulation, and the eventual shattering of perceived reality are prevalent. Number 10. Carol Hoff, Unwittingly Sharing a Home with John Wayne Gacy Carol Hoff was the second wife of John Wayne Gacy, a notorious serial killer known for murdering at least 33 young men and boys in the 1970s. Hoff and Gacy were married in 1972 and divorced in 1976. Their marriage coincided with the period when Gacy was actively committing his crimes. 
Gacy, who often performed at children's parties as Pogo the Clown, concealed his criminal activities from Hoff. Their home in Norwood Park, Illinois, became the grave for many of his victims, unbeknownst to Hoff. The discovery of multiple bodies buried beneath their house only came after their divorce when Gacy's crimes were uncovered in 1978. Hoff had lived with a man who was outwardly charming and community-oriented, unaware of the horrors he was perpetrating in the very space they shared. This stark contrast between Gacy's public persona and his private atrocities is a harrowing reminder of the duplicity that some serial killers can exhibit.